It's the debut of Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday. Three words, it's getting annoying. Rising head coach Rick Schantz joins us to explain why he said that. Plus, you can call him JJ. We call him a highlight machine. Get to know rising star Jason Johnson. And we dive deep into the fans who give the rising a clear advantage at home. Get your flares ready. Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday starts now. Welcome to the debut of Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday. I am Mitch Carr along with Cheerson Sussell and Kristen Keogh. This is a show devoted entirely to the Phoenix Rising Football Club, its players and fans. We'll have head coach Rick Schantz in studio every show and we're going to talk to him in just a minute. But first, let's kick this thing off with hot headers. The headlines making news on this Soccer Sunday. The Rising played to its third straight draw to open the season with Phoenix leading 2-1 in stoppage time. Colorado Springs' Ishmael Jome made good on his free kick for the equalizer, robbing the good guys of the win. Uh, obviously, we wanted the three points and we were, we were really close to getting it. And just in the last minutes, we, we let it slip away, which, which is frustrating. But it seems like we just can't get the right bounces to go our way. Uh, we're, we're pushing hard and we're proving a hard team to beat. but. We keep dropping points in form of, of draws rather than wins. Um, especially on our home field, we want to win every game here uh, for our fans, for the club. And, and we, we drop two. Uh, it's time to, to focus up and rebound next game. Yeah, we have to find something to take from it. I think we created more than enough chances to win. You got to put them away so everyone can be better. And it's time now for the coach's corner. We welcome in Rick Schantz, head coach of the Phoenix Rising. And coach, uh, you this is not your first year as a coach of Phoenix Rising, but it is your first year as the head coach. So what has it been like taking over the reins and being the, the head guy in charge instead of one of the assistants? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very different this year. Uh, we had the offseason and an opportunity to uh, really kind of put our stamp on it with the staff and you know, build the team that I wanted to build. And it's, it's very different. The style of football and is different or soccer and uh, it's fun. It's exciting. Uh, we're, we're just kind of waiting to get the results going. But uh, last year as an assistant under Patrice, I learned a ton. Uh, when he departed, it was uh, the, the ownership came to me and said, you know, are you ready for this? And I remember uh, waking up in the middle of the night and getting that phone call and saying, I'm, I'm not letting go this time. So uh, it was my second opportunity as an interim. And, uh, you know, we made it all the way to the final and was rewarded with a contract to be the head coach. So uh, now we just got to go win that cup. <laughs> so speaking of that, let's talk about last night's match mm -hmm. ended in yet another draw, but it seemed like in this game you guys really control uh, controlled the time of possession. Uh, lots of great opportunities some missed opportunities. Um, do you feel like this team is better than the scoreboard indicates? It's a good question. Um, we've had uh, three very different draws in San Antonio. I don't think we were very organized and you know we didn't prepare the guys uh, properly for the match but we made adjustments quickly you saw the character of the team and, and the fight uh, you know we kind of I think we stole a point there then we come home against New Mexico and uh, you tie 2-2 in a game that or 3-3 in a game that we were very good but made a lot of mistakes uh, and I felt like they finally put it all together last night it was a very very good performance um, Adam said it in, in his interview that uh, we should have taken our chances and been a bit more clinical, but I think ultimately this is just one of those games we're going to look back on it and, and realize that it, it just kind of stoked the fire, and I think the guys are ready to start getting those wins. Speaking of Adam, Adam John scoring an incredible goal. I think we just saw it That's there. That's just fun to watch right there. Uh, and it's so much fun to watch. <laughs> Obviously, the fans uh, thoroughly enjoyed that and it was the first lead that you guys had of 2019. Yeah. So it had to have been a special moment. I mean, I know it, it ended in a draw, but I'm sure that that had to be a special moment for you guys. Right, as soon as we scored, uh, it reminded me of last year, some big important goals we scored in our playoff run and turning around to the to the staff and kind of a, a just emotional 
uh, elation and excitement and it felt awesome looking at the stadium and the fans and everybody kind of knew that you know this this was coming and you know unfortunately we gave up the the game tying goal but that was a spectacular goal and I've already seen that you know they're hinting at calling it the uh, was it the Salt River Leap or something oh, like I that. love it so I it love it cool. a little bit and, like uh, the Lambo yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I loved it it was awesome well that was the first goal of the season that hasn't been an equalizer I believe right yeah yeah we were pretty good at playing from behind so. must be nice to be on the front foot for one yeah yeah, it didn't last very long, though. <laughs> <laughs> it did not. Well, you know what? How about what lasts a little bit longer? Maybe some caffeine? You like your coffee. <laughs> we saw a tweet from you today. Batman in your coffee. That was really impressive. How did you, how did you get Batman in your coffee? Yeah, so uh, one of our assistant coaches, uh, Blair Gavin, is a, is a big fan of coffee houses all around Phoenix. And he, uh, he picked uh, Schmooze Coffee and Workplace for, for that pregame cup of coffee. And uh, I ordered my... Americano, and uh, this is how it showed up, and it, I felt like it was a good sign. It was uh, so I, I figured I'd tell the guys that we had to be superheroes, and uh, it almost worked out. And we could say Adam John was flying through the air like Batman. Yeah, so. he looked a little bit like. <laughs> Do you think it's going to become a pregame ritual? Uh, we'll, we'll go to different coffee houses, but this one might have to stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Head Coach Rick Schantz, The first of many interviews that we're going to do. Thank you. And we're going to send it over to Kristen right now. Yeah, let's talk about what we're seeing here on social media. I know I was tweeting a ton last night. It seemed like we had that game in the bag, but you know what, Brozino, he kind of summed it all up here with how we were all feeling by the end of the game. Keep an eye on this kid right here. This was when we had that penalty kick opportunity. Watch this kid. Oh, it's blocked and oh, he's so excited. And then he's just so let down. Brozino saying it was close, but still a great game. Hashtag uprising. And we want to make sure you're all using that hashtag so that we can find your social media posts on Twitter, on Instagram, so that we can put everything you have to say right here on Soccer Sunday. Susio said this was a tie that felt like a loss and it really did. He said, see you there next week, though. Lots of and left. Good night, my fellow Phoenix Rising fam, and we got to play the gift for you. Good night. Yeah, we kind of left feeling that way a little bit, but we're going to cheer you up with this. Jeff has a baby on the way in May, and he's obviously a huge Phoenix Rising fan, so look what he got made for his baby on the way. A little Phoenix Rising onesie. Yes, you can get Phoenix Rising gear, even for the itty bitty fans. The baby's name, Oliver, on the back. So the baby is due in May. So you know what, um, Jeff, if you see this, please make sure you tweet at me and give me the follow up picture when the baby is born and we can see that little little guy in his new onesie. Cheerson, I know you're looking forward to seeing that, right? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, do the rising have MLS in their future? We go in depth on the issue with co-owner Tim Reister later on in the show. Plus an up close and personal look at the fans that create a true home pitch advantage. And we get to know the man whose highlights have been seen by millions. What makes Jason Johnson stand out? Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday is back in two minutes. Time for a rising rewind back to one of the most electric moments in team history. Amadou Dia. Jason Johnson, you've got to be kidding me. An otherworldly goal from JJ. This Phoenix team is must see TV. Great play, great call, an electric moment in team history. Also, one of the most widely viewed as well. That's right. The clip of that goal was seen by more than 3 million people last summer. Wow, and no doubt Jason Johnson has helped put the Phoenix Rising on the map with his highlight goals. He's also an easy guy to remember because of his initials. Let's get to know Jason Johnson in tonight's goals. Flemings, room to work with. Flemings in for JJ. Jason Johnson does we're hanging out with Jason Johnson. Jason, do you go by JJ? Yeah, JJ, everybody knows me as JJ. Okay, JJ, KK. This could be a new regular segment, I think. But first, let's start by getting to know you. So, this is your third year yes. with The Rising. Yes. Does anything feel different or unique? 
every year feels unique. We're going after gold. Um, unfortunately, we haven't reached that goal yet, but um, previous years we have come closer and closer to that goal. So this year, there's a lot of buzz in the locker room and the fans that um, this year maybe they're here. So you grew up in Jamaica. What is the so soccer culture like there? Um, I would say it's it's pretty similar to other countries because even when I speak to like guys in the locker room, like the guys from Spain, the guys from um, all over the world, Costa Rica, all over the world, they, they say it's like similar. It's like um, you just need a ball and some friends pretty much. It's, it's like a, a stress reliever. Tell me a little bit about the relationship that you have with the other Jamaican players on this team. A lot of people don't know, I didn't know um, Junior Flemings before he came here. Never seen him, never met him. But as soon as we saw each other, it's like a it's like an immediate effect. Like once you see a Jamaican, you just have that connection. So it, it was like I knew him for years. So um, we, we tend to go out um, together, stick to each other, fun around, joke around, um, speak in our native um, tongue, which is Patwa. Um, so it's really fun to have these guys around me. You know? I see you post a lot on social media about the fans here, oh, and you talk a lot about the energy. Talk a little bit to us about what that does for you when you're on the field and you can pick up on that energy. It's hard to explain. Like, the guys, you guys would have to come out and really experience what I'm talking about. Like, everybody in the stadium, they're with every play. Even the guys behind the, the banditos and the guys behind the goal, the, the energy they put out. And just to hear the fans, even the bad Adidas in the background, like it kind of helps you push through. You know, it's like I say, it's hard to explain. You just have to come out and experience it yourself. What expectations do you have for yourself this season? Um, easily to help the team win um, a championship. What is it like to be a part of a team that is new to a city and has the big goal of becoming an MLS team. That's why they brought players like us in. If you see in the locker rooms, there's a lot of talented players and that's why the coach um, put his trust in the players he had gotten. It's because they know we can bring the cup here. We are looking forward to talking to you more and getting to know you even more as the season goes on. Good Appreciate luck to you. you. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you. And JJ currently is tied for the team lead in goals this season with two. Adam John and Solomon Asante are right there with him, each with a pair of their own. Don't you love his accent, Mitch? I do, I do. I just, I, I want to talk like that, but then I remember I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> Time now for something we call rising up. The name Phoenix Rising works as a metaphor for the team that's on its way up, but it also describes the fans pretty well. From struggling to get a thousand supporters on match day to selling out Casino Arizona Field, the passion for this team is rising too. And this week I spoke with some longtime fans and a few newcomers about the Phoenix Rising fan culture. Borussia Dortmund has the yellow wall. Millwall has the den. Phoenix Rising, you are my team, until the day I die. Phoenix Rising FC has the Bandidos and the Red Fury. It's not even fair to, for me to explain it to you. You just have to come and, and check it out by check it out yourself. They like to bring the atmosphere, they like to bring the noise. On match day, the two supporters groups combine to pump up their guys and freak out the other guys. Our thing is, is chanting and being supportive of 90 minutes plus non-stop. All ethnicities, all, all financial backgrounds, all religions, doesn't really matter, it's just the sport itself. John McPherson is one of the founding members of the Red Fury. He's seen support for the club grow through changes to the team's roster, its location, even its name. You go back to the very first team that was here, the Phoenix Wolves, um, we were fans of them. McPherson goes to every home match and his wife goes to the away games as well. And this summer, their Red Fury fever will spread. So I'm here for two months and uh, I would thought I would come and see them while I was here. Nathan Muckhart is McPherson's nephew, visiting from Northern Scotland for three months. He's taking a tour of the American Southwest by following Phoenix Rising FC from match to match. We're going to games in El Paso and uh, in California, and I'll be coming to the home games as well. Speaking of international flavor. We have people from all over the U.S. and Mexico, some parts of South America. So we all came together for the same passion, which is football, which is soccer. Thibaut Gonzalez helped found the Banditos. He says he did it out of need. It started off as uh, three guys at a bar just uh, talking about soccer in Arizona and the lack of uh, support. Where we're from, 
It's a uh, parkour support for the home team. So we wanted to bring that here. Now three guys has turned into a 90 plus minute tour de force, complete with banners, drums, and nonstop chanting. It's all fueled by. Beer definitely helps a lot and but you get the high from, from each other. You, you, you get the high from, from the next person over. Players old and new can't miss the support and can't help but appreciate it. Even before I, I got to Phoenix, they were reaching out and showing their support. And, uh, and then uh, for our one home game, they came sell out. Amazing atmosphere. So really excited to be a part of this. They're awesome. I think it's the best support in the league. You know, we consistently sell out the stadium, you know, 7,000 people standing room only, uh, even in the hot summer months. So they love it. And, and we love that they love it. Look at that crowd all pumped up. In 2018, these supporters helped carry Phoenix Rising FC all the way to the USL Cup final. And they lost. We were already winners. It didn't matter the outcome. I mean, coming from not winning anything and not being anywhere near first place to playing the championship game, this is, it, was, it was a win-win situation. The loss just made the team and its supporters ready to continue the rise. To just see other people getting the, the bug for it is amazing. It's just going to get bigger. So the, the, more, the more the team is successful and the more keep, they keep getting themselves out there, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you like what you see, both these groups are open to all fans and welcoming more and more fans. And that brings us to our forward line tonight. If you love the squad and you want to join up with them, just stroll on over there at the next home match. That will be this Saturday, April 6th against Fresno, followed by two on the road. Our next Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday is scheduled for Sunday, April 14th. All right, well, do the Rising have MLS in their future? We go in-depth on the issue with co-owner Tim Reister. Welcome back. Time now for Rising from the Vault. A look back into our archives to dust off something old you may not have seen before. With all the success of winning the Western Conference Championship a year ago and playing for the USL Cup, the Phoenix Rising are in an even bigger battle behind the scenes, trying to make it to the big leagues of MLS. A year ago, Team 12's Bram Resnick sat down with co-owner Tim Reister to tackle the team's biggest issues. And you know there are a lot of cynics out there. This is not an American game. It's too slow. There's not enough scoring. Uh, it just won't work here. And yeah. for, it's been, it's had so much potential for so many years. When does that moment come when it just makes it? Well, it's already working. So we launched Phoenix Rising FC just about one year ago. Um, and we had 16 home games last year and we sold out 10 of those home games with a stadium that didn't have any cooling technology. Um, we've had two home games so far for the start of our 2018 season and we've sold out both of those. Now, arguably our stadium's still small, so is it fair to say, oh, that means that it's, it's gonna explode here? Well, Atlanta launched a major league soccer team playing in Division I one year ago and everybody thought Atlanta probably wouldn't be a great soccer market. People were wondering why MLS expanded there and they're enjoying average attendance of 70,000 fans per game. Arizona should be a better soccer state than Georgia with the amount of Hispanic soccer fans we enjoy here. We have hundreds of thousands of kids who are currently enrolled in youth soccer programs so their families understand the sport and have a new enjoyment for it. There are more kids playing soccer in this state than all the other sports combined. This is one case where you guys don't want any of our money, yeah. which is very unusual. Well, it'd be, it'd be very helpful, um, but we didn't ask for it. But we know the citizens of this state have given so much to help professional sports historically. Um, and we think that if, if we needed to ask them for that kind of assistance, we just couldn't achieve where we need to go. How much time do you have to really to get a franchise in MLS? I actually believe we have quite a bit of time because I think MLS wants Phoenix, and I think they're definitely going to eventually come to Phoenix. And if you think like the owners of MLS, their sponsors want a market of this size, it doesn't make sense for their league not to have the largest city in the entire United States with the most television viewing households not currently in their league. If you look at every unit of measure for their evaluation and all the cities that are competing, Phoenix is number one across every single item. The stadium plan that we've shared with you and with the soccer fans of Arizona has already been approved by MLS. That was number one. Number two, you have to have, and this is kind of a fun, people will laugh when they hear this one. You have to have a billionaire 
in your cap table of your ownership group. Exactly. And we didn't have that. So fortunately for Phoenix and fortunately for Arizona, a fabulous entrepreneur named Alex Tsung from China made an investment in our organization to help us get to MLS. So and he is the billionaire. He's, he, and he's so much more than that. The guy is so smart. He understands this sport. He understands business. He's a self-made man. He started a company in China to create unique hotel experiences and currently owns 4,400 hotels. Not hotel rooms, mm -hmm. 4,400 hotels. Just to give you the idea of scale, uh, he knows how to grow business. He's already been to two of our, our matches this year. He'll fly in from China to watch the game. He's that committed to the team. If MLS awarded you a franchise, tomorrow. That's correct. Could you start construction next week on this land That's for a correct. new stadium? That's correct. You have title or whatever you need uh, legally to do that? We are two weeks away from turning the first shovel on this land if we choose to stay on this land to build the stadium. We have the ability to stay here in this location where we are today for 70 years. We're, we're two years into a 70-year arrangement, um, but at the end of five years, we have the opportunity to move to a different facility if we think that would be better for the stadium. This is truly the best location in our minds for us to be. We're right at the junction of the 101 and 202, but it may make sense to have uh, training facilities in some of these other areas. So we're looking at all the opportunities available to the team now. We are sorely in need of more grass throughout the valley for soccer, for soccer fields. Uh, all the people for, for youth soccer, you yeah, mean? Or just all, for, the people watching your show who have kids or grandkids playing youth soccer know what I'm talking about. Green grass for soccer is in higher demand. Green grass is gold in this town for soccer because there's just not enough of it. So one of our missions, we want to build 20 fields as a part of a training facility, not only for our team and for our youth academy, but to help kids around the community. We, we want kids seven days a week on our fields learning to love this beautiful game of soccer. All right, exciting stuff. And we end the show with a just for kicks and some fired up fans from last night. Check it out right after Adam John's goal to make it two to one. He goes into the crowd to celebrate and a fan cracks open a flare a little too close for comfort, though. That was incredible to watch. Well, hey, our first show's been fire. Thanks for watching. The next one comes back in April. We'll see you then.